Welcome everyone to another episode of Warren's Off the Rails with Kingdom Hearts Theories. Oh shit! Before we launch into it, this is obviously going to contain spoilers for the game series. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and get those hot new videos as soon as they're released. Okay, obligatory messages out of the way, let's get to the potatoes and molasses. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite theory, Demix is the master of masters. Yes! Demix time! So we all know that my all-time favorite character in Kingdom Hearts is Shion, Aqua, Kyrie. Surprise! It's Demix. What? Why did you dunce? He's funny, he's cowardly, he's lovable, and he's here for a good time. He's the type of person Cypher would call a chicken wuss. But what if that was all a clever ruse? Our argument that Demix is the master of masters is pretty simple and stands with four strong pieces of evidence. Number one, body language, mannerisms, and manipulation. Number two, Demix has a mysterious connection to the age of fairy tales. Number three, Demix is very mysterious as a character. And number four, Demix is either a really good liar or he knows things. Ready, set, dive. Let's start this off with the most obvious argument that Demix is the master of masters. And that is body language, mannerisms, and manipulation. They're both playful, mysterious, extremely laid back, and overall, very passive when it comes to the events happening around them. Even Kirithi themselves state, In the master's playful and mischievous way, he gave his apprentice Lushu a very important role. Okay, but what constitutes manipulation? GoodTherapy.org defines manipulation as the practice of using indirect tactics to control behavior, emotions, and relationships, and goes on to list some signs of manipulation that include passive-aggressive behavior, implicit threats, dishonesty, withholding information, isolating a person from loved ones, gaslighting, verbal abuse, and use of sex to achieve goals. We can rule out some of these, like isolating a person from loved ones, and use of sex, because as we know, Goofy is the only one who fucks in Kingdom Hearts. Now, this isn't a call-out post for our faves being problematic. So while I'm happy to provide receipts for any of the other types of manipulation, we're only going to do a bit of broad examination here. One way they're both very manipulative is preferring others to do their dirty work for them. Master of Masters gets Lushu and the Foretellers to do a lot of tasks that he could very easily do himself. Dimix is often shown shirking his duties and even bribes Roxas to do his missions in 358 over two days. Not only are they both masters of manipulation, they are both prone to rapidly switching through emotions, and they know how to combine this to get what they want. In the cutscene before the final battle with Dimix, he's acting nonchalant and even kind of friendly towards Sora, which is an act of manipulation. Sora calls him out using the phrases, how did a wimp like you get into Organization 13? And, I bet you can't even fight. This clues Demix into the idea that Sora has bought this cowardly act, hook, line, and sinker, which allows him to be a little more flexible in his display to Sora at this point. Demix rapidly shifts into a more serious demeanor, telling him, You shouldn't judge anyone by appearance. And then immediately after that line, Sora draws his keyblade, which is a clear sign of escalating intent of violence. Demix then turns his back to full exposure to Sora, which is the biggest dick energy I've ever seen. But he's back to his goofy, plucky, cowardly self. His body language is meek, unimposing, turned in on himself, like he's not a threat, like he's just a big idiot. Sora, also a big idiot, falls for this. Who's this kook, he asks. Then, when Goofy reminds Sora that nobody's have no heart, Demix again goes to manipulate Sora. Oh, we do too have hearts. Don't be mad. Shifts demeanor yet again when Donald rebukes this, and with a deadly serious tone, Demix remarks, Silence, traitor. Author's note, we think that line has more than a few connotations, but we'll get into that at a later date. The Master is frequently shown doing the exact same thing. For instance, in the back cover cutscenes, when the Master is giving Ased his role as Ira's second-in-command, 
Ased shows resistance to this. The master, who had been playful up until this point, says, What? Is that disappointment I hear? Still, he's being playful and sly, his tone joking, but then he follows it up with, Did you want to be leader? His tone almost imperceptibly shifts. Ased concedes, saying he's not volunteering, but he feels he'd be a good fit. The master's tone shifts dramatically. Right. You really want to be leader, huh? This line is presented cold and calculated, and he remains serious for a few more lines. When he tells Ased, well, I might disappear one day. And when Ased doesn't respond, the master reverts back to being playful and silly. Well, I might disappear one day. That... Well, I might disappear. Disappear? Why? Where? Speak up sooner if you're listening. It was embarrassing for me. And while these examples of the master's emotional shifts aren't as dramatic as Demix's, they do say a lot of their similar personalities. Even the Kingdom Hearts wiki reads, Although highly revered for his immense intelligence and foresight, the master of masters behaves in an unpredictable and eccentric manner, making his true intentions difficult to discern. He is a mischievous and playful individual. Although he demonstrates a more serious side to his persona, he has a tendency to weave in and out of serious moments at a mere whim, being somber at one moment and laughing playfully the next. They both play dumb, but know exactly how to word a phrase to get the precise information or reaction that they want out of someone, without drawing suspicion or attention to themselves. Number two, Dimmix has a mysterious connection to the age of fairy tales. We know this because of the cutscene in Kingdom Hearts 3, where Larxene, Merluxia, Demix, Luxord, and Xemnas are having a conversation on the rock pillars in the Keyblade Graveyard. The Age of Fairy Tales, for those who may not know, is the time period in which the browser and mobile game iterations, Key, Back Cover, Unchained Key, Union Cross, etc., there's been about 80 million names for this game, take place. It ends with the Keyblade War, an unspecified amount of time before the events of Birth by Sleep. Got it? Great. So in the cutscene we referenced a moment ago, Xemnas states, The first six members of the original organization were all apprentices to Ansem the Wise, and the seventh and eighth members joined thereafter. The thirteenth member was Roxas, a Keyblade wielder. So what about you? How do you suppose I chose numbers nine through twelve? You four are going to reveal your greatest secret, the ancient Keyblade legacy that slumbers within you. This means that the four of them have a common link, and we know that Larxene and Marluxia's somebodies were in the Age of Fairy Tales as Elrena and Larium. In the cutscene, it does a shot of each of their reactions to Xemnas announcing this. Demix doesn't look surprised. He looks more concerned than anything. Now, we're still awaiting the story of the Age of Fairy Tales to be completed in the mobile game. But, we can infer that this means Demix and Luxord somebodies are also a part of that time. Author's note! We find Luxord to be hella suspicious. And this video works in tandem with our other theory that Luxord is Foreteller Brain. Go check that one out if you haven't already. So, with that being said, admittedly this is the most shaky part of our argument, but we're going to combine it with... Number three, Dimmix is very mysterious as a character. We don't know anything about him. He is the only person who's somebody we haven't met besides Luxord. Why was he chosen for the organization when he clearly displays an aversion to violence, battle, or literally anything desirable by Xehanort for his Lich plan? In Kingdom Hearts 3, Dimmix is almost giddy that he's so underestimated. I'm actually here on a top secret mission. Apparently, I'm so off everyone's radar that I'm just the guy to handle a special delivery. When he brings Anson the Wise to Ienzo, he says this with an amused tone, almost like this is a game to him. Even in the graveyard, his attitude doesn't change, and he confesses as much to Larxene. A cereal bowl would make a better vessel. Whoa now, you are way out of line. I am extremely imposing. 
when I want to be, which is admittedly almost never. He's constantly telling people he's useless or not powerful. Why repeatedly reference how unimportant or useless you are unless you're trying to hide the fact you're actually important? On top of that, he's shown to be extremely friendly with Zigbar. The wiki states, Dimmick seems to be on good terms with both Axel and Zigbar, calling Zigbar Ziggy, and is often shown talking to him in the gray area. Since we know exactly who Zigbar is, it seems kind of suspicious that Zigbar would let someone get so close to him, yeah? And another thing, in all the official artwork that I could find of the organization, Zigbar, Dimmix, and Luxord are always paired in a trio. And we all know Nomura is very intentional with character placement in his artwork. It's even noted that Zigbar and Dimmix's coat designs are similar. Dimmix wears a black cloak similar in style to Zigbar's, with somewhat closer fitting sleeves and pointed shoulder pads, though Dimmix's shoulder pads are more noticeable than Zigbar's. And where is he in Kingdom Hearts 3? What is he doing? The Ultimania book states he's not around for a reason, but it doesn't say what. He's a main character in Gemini's journal, yet he doesn't get an ending in Kingdom Hearts 3. Even Syax and Ansem the Wise get parts in the ending. Literally, where is Demix? So that leaves us asking very similar questions about Demix that we would cotton-eyed Joe. Where did he come from? And where did he go? Author's note, some things to mention about Demix that we couldn't find a good place to fit in. Number one, water is his theme. Water is also the theme of darkness. Water is also, also a major theme in Kingdom Hearts. Number two, we know body jumping is a thing. It's Xehanort's main lich plan. Where did he learn it from? Lushu obviously knows how to do it too. Where did he learn it from? We think the Master of Masters taught him. In fact, here's a quote from Nomura about the ending to Kingdom Hearts 3. The Keyblade Masters from the distant past known as the Foretellers have transcended time to gather once again. Zigbar too was once a Foreteller, Lushu, who has been alive for a very long time, changing his form. Number three, we know the Master of Masters literally pieced out of existence. No one knows where he went or what happened to him. He knew he was going to disappear, but when he tried explaining it, he couldn't. I think he body jumped. Another quote from Nomura. In the last part of the epilogue, seven black pieces are brought out to be used in a new game. Do six of those represent the six apprentices of the Master of Masters? Yes. Who is the remaining one? It's someone you may be able to guess, but it's a secret. Part four, Demix is either a liar and very good at it, or he knows things. Demix, at first glance, seems pretty, well, stupid. But at this point, we can confidently say that's just acting. He's incredibly smart, especially when it comes to things of science. For instance, Dimmix knows a lot of things about the replicas and even corrects Larxene on their capability. Oh no. The replicas are way more real than you remember. I mean, one stole my spot. In a cutscene between Vexen and Dimmix during Kingdom Hearts 3, Vexen says, men of science like us, not like me, when talking to Dimmix. Men like us. In the pursuit of science, we sometimes make terrible mistakes. I'm not a scientist. We know that the Master of Masters is very knowledgeable in sciencey things. I mean, he creates Kirithi. Oh, we do too have hearts. As we know, Demix says this to Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2. At this point in the game, we know that nobodies do not have hearts or emotions. However, Xemnas later reveals nobodies can, in fact, gain their hearts and emotions back. A heart is never lost for good. There may have been variances in our dispositions, but a number of us unquestionably showed signs of the burgeoning replacement. <gasps> Once born, the heart can also be nurtured. Our experiments creating Heartless were attempts to control the mind and convince it to renounce its sense of self. But understand, 
One can banish the heart from the body, but the body will try to replace it the first chance it gets for as many times as it takes. And so I knew, even after we were divided into heartless and nobodies, it was just a temporary separation. Why then? Why did you lie to them and tell them they had no hearts? In this exchange, it's revealed that nobodies do in fact have hearts. So, is Demix lying to Sora? Or does he know things? In conclusion, in the Ultimania, Nomura was asked, Who was the person in the black robe who made a heart with their hands against the moon in the final scene? To which he answers, The master of masters. Nobody else would be messing around while dressed like that. All Dimmix does is mess around while dressed like that! Thanks for watching this theory video. What did you think? Could Dimmix really be the master of masters? Or is he just another dandelion caught in Xehanort's plan? Let us know in the comments section and keep those eyes peeled for our Remind playthrough coming to an internet browser near you. Until next time, stay awesome and we'll catch you later. Bye!